it's Jen from Shabby Fabrics with a fun project today. We're just going to be going over how to make this basket block. It's a classic block. You can see it makes a really nice wall hanging. This is the Purple Passion Collection from Marcus and it really struck a chord with me. I love that vintage purple the the really warm kind of light tan and that kind of that dusty green i did it really spoke to me so we've got a couple projects actually coming out with purple passion and i wanted to definitely be able to bring you a smaller project a wall hanging so we won't go over any specific measurements it's more of the mechanics of how the block goes together you can see i've got one block here we also put our inner and outer border on because we're going to miter the corner as well. I wanted to show that to you if maybe you've never mitered a corner before. And the reason that we did it is because there's actually a stripe in our outer border fabric and we wanted those to meet at a nice 90 degree uh, kind of juxtaposition and you do that with a miter. More on that later. So as we look at our basket block, um, it's half square triangles and then of course we have some larger uh, triangles coming in, some rectangles, and, and really how does this thing go together? Really fun project, um, easily done in a day, including the quilting. So with half square triangles, there are a couple options. We're gonna go with the traditional way that I learned, maybe the same way you learned, or maybe if you're just watching, maybe you don't have a traditional way, maybe you haven't learned this yet. I'll give you a couple options with that. Our half square triangles are made up of two fabrics, as you can see, and the rule of seven eighths applies. What that means is if our half square triangles, once they're sewn into the basket and into our uh, wall hanging, finish at two inches, the normal rule of seven eighths apply, meaning you would add seven eighths of an inch to that finished measurement and cut your two fabrics to two and seven eighths. And you can absolutely do that. Now, if you, I hope you sew perfectly because there'll be nothing, nothing left to square up. I always like when I can make my block just a little bit bigger and be able to square that up on all four sides. And now I have a perfect half square triangle going into the project as we're sewing everything together. That has been, for me, a tried and true way to get a much more accurate block in the end, especially when you have multiples being sewn together. How we achieve that is simply bump that seven eighths up to a full inch. So if you're gonna end up with two inch half square triangles, go ahead and cut those to a full one inch, one inch larger at three inches. That's the traditional approach to making half square triangles. More about using maybe an aid, that's, that's kind of my go-to called star singles. But what I've done in advance is just cut these to the three inches that I talked about. I drew my line and I sewed a quarter inch on either side. That's how you make uh, a traditional half square triangle. Now Creative Grid has come out with a tool as well. So if you don't wanna draw the line from corner to corner and have to seek a quarter inch on either side, you can instead place that diagonal draw on either side of those lines and now you're just sewing on the line. Either way, that is a more traditional way to achieve the half square triangle. And then I just use my straight edge and my rotary cutter to cut those apart. And so you have two. If you start off with two squares, you'll end up with two half square triangles. So as I press those, I tend to uh, pressed to the dark side as a default. Sometimes it doesn't always work out like that if you're thinking forward to maybe how you want to press uh, your block. But I, I prefer to press to the dark if I don't have a reason to press to the light. Go ahead and cut away those a uh, little bit of what some people kind of call the flaps or the dog ears. I've heard different terms. And because we upsized our fabric to the three inches instead of the seven eighths, now my block is bigger than it should be. You want, in order to have a finished two inch, you want to have your block be at two and a half inches going into the project because we'll be using a quarter inch seam allowance. Now this is Creative Grid's two and a half inch, really it's kind of a square up tool. 
you can see this beautiful diagonal and we have our both our vertical and horizontal kind of lines and then our bullseye right in the middle. All kinds of fabulous lineup options, but you want to put this so that your diagonal is right along your seam. And it gives me the chance to square up on all four sides. Don't bias it down in the corner so you're only trimming two. No, you, the whole goal here is to be able to trim up every single side and really achieve incredible accuracy. Obviously, it takes a little bit more time to do the squaring up, but I think it pays off really well in the end when you're sewing everything together and nothing's fighting you. I've had that so many times where I used to cut them to two and seven eighths. They didn't come out that accurate, to be honest. And as I was trying to sew everything together, it was just a little hit and miss. Didn't come out quite the way I had hoped. So I've learned, you know what? Just upsize, square up. And now you can see we have perfect two and a half inch half square triangles going into our project. That's one option for you. The next option and really one of my favorite options that even eliminates the squaring up is something called star singles. Star singles allow you to make eight half square triangles all at the same time by uh, sewing on paper, sewing on dashed lines. In fact, let me show this to you. We would sew on our dashed lines with a much shorter stitch length. I'm gonna bring that way down because the goal is here to be able to perforate the paper. So let's just look at our star single. Let me just turn that around so that you can see that. So we've got our, our fabric here. I mean, I've got one sewn together, but it, it just tells you, cut your uh, squares to six inches. Pro tip, here's what I want to, I want to point something out to you. This paper is six and a quarter inches. I like, notice this fabric sticking out around the edge. I like cutting my fabrics bigger than what they say because I want to see fabric all the way around my star single. I want to make sure I've hit that star single. And by making sure my fabric is just a little bit bigger that I'm able to do that. So you'll place your two fabrics right side together, place your paper on top and be sure to pin out in here. Show with a, sew with a shortened stitch length starting at, like, let's see here, there's number, this is side number one. So we would literally, let me just turn this around so you can see that. Just start sewing right off of here. I'll just show you on this one. That dark circle is where you're gonna stop, needle down, and then simply pivot. Sew down this track, needle down, pivot. And you continue all the way around until everything is sewn. I want you to see that. Now, once you have that, this is where you'll come back and you wanna be really accurate. You are putting your straight edge or your ruler, whatever you have, exactly on that solid line. And you're cutting that out just like this. And you'll be cutting everything apart and continuing on. Now, I've got, uh, I guess I don't have one of those cut out. Let's just do that together. In fact, what's nice is you can see how with the shortened stitch length, it really does a great job of perforating the paper because we're gonna, of course, remove our paper. So let's just do that real quick. Cut exactly on that line. And we're gonna measure this one too. I want you to see how accurate these are. So just lay the paper back, give a good fold, and it tears right away. So my stitch length is like 1.5. I normally sew on a two and a half, so it's considerably shorter. You're putting more stitches in to stabilize everything because when we tear that paper out, you know, there's a little bit of pressure on the fabric at that point and we really wanna stabilize everything. So again, we'll give a good press, pressing toward the outside. I think it's still really important to double check that we do have a good solid two and a half So let's use that tool. And it's right on the money. I mean, that is, you can see from the overhead camera, it is exact. 
So what that does for us, we don't have to draw the line. We don't have to sew a quarter inch away from the line, or even if you use the Creative Grid uh, seam guide, you're not sewing on those lines. You're not having to oversize and trim up. It is a really efficient way to make, as I mentioned, eight half square triangles at the same time. Now in our project, almost all of our fabrics of our smaller half square triangles, we needed eight. But let's say, and there is one fabric where you only need four. Well, no problem. You'll simply take your star single paper and you can cut that exactly on that drawn line. And now with half of that, you'll make four. Same process, you're just right side together with your half paper, so uh, pin, and you're just stitching on your dashed lines, cutting on your solid lines, and now you have four. So you don't have to always make eight. You can definitely cut your papers apart and make as little as two if you want to. So I love that option. Once you have your half square triangles made, that's when the construction will begin. And I want to go over that specifically. Let me just clean up. <laughs> I've got stuff everywhere here. Let me just clean this up, get this off to the side. You know, I forgot to mention anytime I'm dealing, you know, you're going to be cutting across that fabric, you've got bias going on. Just add sizing to those fabrics really, really well. Iron them and then cut them to what you want to do. I think I find that the sizing, again, helps stabilize things. It makes things more accurate. I have less stretching on the bias, all good things. So let me just bring out and show you really the mechanics of how this is going to go together. We made our half square triangles and, and, the, and we just... Uh, also have some plain old squares here. So we just assembled our half square triangles, two and then one. I want to show you the back side of that. And notice the drawn line here. And also notice how our drawn line is hitting this point. That's how we're going to have really beautiful points. That's this part of the basket right here. So this that's how the construction initially begins. We'll place this right side together and we are going to Sew this, and this is where our patchwork pins are going to come into play. And make sure that nothing is shifting. I'm going to increase my stitch length to maybe a two. I've got bias going on. I really want to stabilize this. I think there was a time where I'm like, yep, I just sew in a two and a half all the time. And I'm realizing, you know, that should flex and that should vary depending on the needs because I'm going to sew on this line and eventually cut away. So I'm going to bring that stitch length up to probably a 2-0. And let's do our stitch here straight on that line. I'm going to start, I think I'm going to use... Um, a little bit of my fabric here. I'm going to use one of my half square triangles I've already sewn. Kind of as a starter strip, I kind of just want to get going. Let's see here. When I designed this, you know, I have my software and I'm designing, I'm thinking, how's that construction gonna work? <laughs> it's not, not necessarily intuitive. I'm just gonna lay this over before I cut anything away. I'm laying this over and here's what we're looking for. How did those points come out? If I clipped any points, or maybe the points are over here, maybe I missed that. I'm pretty satisfied there with what I'm seeing. So with that in mind, I'll now take my creative grid and I'm just going to lay that dashed quarter inch line right along there. Let's cut that. And of course we have this beautiful purple to add to our stash. I love scrap quilts. That's how they happen, right? Leftovers from making a project. And I love, one of the things I love about scrap quilts is just reminiscing. I'm like, oh, I remember when I made that quilt. Oh, I remember when I made that wall hanging. And it's kind of that collection of memories of maybe the quilts you did that year. 
So that's one idea. We've got a great selection of scrap uh, books. So if you're looking for specific quilts, be sure to shop our pattern and book category. I think we have like, oh my gosh, like 1500 or more titles now to choose from. Lots of options. So that's the first part of our quilt right here, of our quilt block, I should say. Now we're gonna come alongside the left side of that. And here, looks like we just chose to press those um, open. Those That would be sewn next. Let's just talk about that. It looks like here, just the way this assembled, the um, it was pressed downward. But one thing I wanna point out too, if you're new at quilting, don't just line this up and start pinning left to right. It's really important that we are focusing on those places that you really need to have everything coming together. That's where you'll first start pinning. So as you can see, I kind of line that up top to bottom and I'm trying to keep my head out of the way as best I can. Um, and then you'll roll this back and then we're going to insert a pin. These are the extra fine pins. That's what you want to be going for at this point. And the same here. You, you want to always pin like this, where you pin those places that just, they have to work out. They have to be there. And then we will pin those other places last. All right. go sew that So this is, let's see here, what did we do with our block? Uh, looks like they pressed the seam open on that one. Sometimes when you're like, ah, sometimes the answer is just to evenly distribute that bulk. So let's go for that. Sometimes pressing is obvious. Here, that's a great example. That's obvious. You have so much going on here, it wants to go there. <laughs> but here, not as obvious. So you have a decision to make. Our goal, of course, is to try to have the block be as flat as possible, especially our long arm quilters. I know appreciate you so much, and, and they, they love that when our blocks lay a lot flatter. They have less broken needles. Okay, I just need to let that iron sit there. I don't want to get too aggressive with that because there's some a lot of bias going on right there. Once you have that sewn together, the next row is that top row, just like that. Once that's done, the next will be our bottom. Comes on like this. Then our side will come on like this. And I know that doesn't look like that's gonna work, and it will. In fact, let me go ahead and get everything sewn together because I wanna be able to show you that last corner. So these are gonna be sewn on exactly as we did before where I'm gonna be pinning, 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 sewing that on here, pretty straightforward, right? And then I'm gonna put the side on and then we come back, I'm just gonna finish that up and we're gonna move right into the miter that may be something completely new to you. So my block looks like this so far. And the reason I wanted to wait till the very end, this seems like such a benign step, but it's not. 
And here's the reason why. We want to make sure that we're intersecting this just so, and we're going to actually mark something on the back side. So how you'll do this is because we're not just going to be sewing from corner to corner. It's not going to hit right if we do that. We want to place this corner piece onto our block and go ahead and pin a couple places. The pattern will talk you through this, but I want to personally show it to you so you don't have any questions about this. This is where our six and a half by 12 and a half inch creative grid ruler is going to really shine. You're going to see the value of rulers like this. So go ahead and flip the project over now. And I want to call your attention to two areas. This point right there that I want to, right there, hopefully you can see that with the overhead camera. We want to put a ruler there from corner to corner at a 45 degree angle. If I just put my ruler here, I don't really know, because I'm going to sew this from the backside. It's a blind uh, uh, seam that I'm going to, to be sewing. I need more lineup. Looking at the Creative Grid ruler, do you see that 45 degree line right there? That's going to be my aid. This is my absolute go-to ruler anytime I'm not doing a width of fabric cut. It, I love all of the things about this ruler. I've got 45s. Um, I love the grip. Obviously, the black dots are my half inch increments. My whole, my white dots are my whole numbers. But how we're going to use this, see that 45? I'm going to line that up with the bottom of my block and I'm going to scoot that. I'm looking at 45, that line right there. And you see how I'm now crossing that? See my point right there? I'm going to point that out because I'm going to draw that line right there. That's what we're going for right there. Now go ahead and press that down, I should say, down with your hand. So that's not going to go anywhere. And let's just pin again from this side. You'll sew on this line now. Let me not use that pin. I want to use a, a nice, fine, extra fine patchwork pin. This is going to help our block have this nice quarter inch seam allowance so when it's sewn into our wall hanging, all the points are coming out beautifully. Let's go sew that. So just like before, I like to check what I've done before I get cut happy and trim away something. Have I done that? Yes. And I'm like, oh no. <laughs> so let's look. Let's see how we feel we did. You know, the points came out really nice right here in the corner. We have our quarter inch seam allowance. I feel really good about that. So let's press that to the outside first. And then we'll come back and let's trim that away. Again, I'm grabbing for that because I've got this nice dash line. That's my quarter and seam allowance right there. Make a cut, some more scraps for our scrap quilt. And let's repress that to the corner. So you'll make your four blocks. We have a simple sashing kind of a center little square here to tie everything together. And now you have your four blocks with your sashing and your cornerstone right in the middle. Whenever you're doing miters, so if you've got an inner border and an outer border, I think it's a lot easier to sew the inner border and the outer border together as a unit. I've mitered corners before where I mitered the inner border and then I sewed the outer border on and I mitered the outer border. I thought that was twice the work. <laughs> and I've learned now that if you are going to be getting this kit, for example, 
Um, just sew the inner border to the outer border. You're certainly fussy cutting those strips to try to get that stripe landing in the same spot on each of the outer borders so that the miter comes out beautifully. Now, if you're just gonna be grabbing the basket's wall hanging pattern and maybe using some fabric at home, if you don't or aren't using a, um, a stripe or anything you need to miter, I wouldn't miter it. I just sew your inner border on and your outer border, and of course, get that all nice and squared up and then sew your outer borders on and finish your, your project. But be, because for Purple Passion, I really love the stripe. So you'll notice here, I just wanted to show you the mechanics of this. Whenever you sew those on, notice that we're stopping about a quarter inch away from the end of that. You can mark that on your fabric as you sew your kind of inner border, outer border unit, which is sewn together, and you attach that to your pieced center. You're just gonna want to leave that, and you can see we reinforce that in the beginning so that it's not gonna be coming undone. The easiest way to do a miter is to simply fold this onto itself just like that, making sure everything is nicely stacked. And you just extend that line. So you see this line that we've achieved right here, just like that. And you're just going to lay that ruler on there. Really important pointer right here, pin, pin, pin. You don't want anything to shift from the table to the sewing machine because it will, it will move on you. This is going to be another one we're wanting to check before we trim anything away. Have I missed a miter? Oh yes. I have missed more miters than I actually hit, <laughs> okay? So, um, and, and the, Sometimes the bigger the miter, uh, you know, you might have a really wide one. Maybe the fabric has a little bit more elasticity. They can be hard to nail. Now you can choose to start here or you can choose to start here. Why don't we, since I've got it drawn here, it's gonna probably be a little bit easier for me to just start here. Let's give it a shot and see how we do. If we don't like, we'll seam rip and start again. Let's see how we did here. See if we like what we're seeing. And I just kind of fan that out. I take a look, I'm like, am I happy with that? Did my stripes line up? If I don't like that, seam rip and start again. Cause you can see maybe off by a 16th of an inch. I think by the time I get everything quilted in there, which obviously moves things again, I think I'm gonna be okay. Once you have that where you want that to be, bring that to the uh, your press, pressing mat. You know, I'm gonna press that from the front too. I want I want you to see that. Once we have our nice 90 degree corner, then you just simply lift up. You'll come in with your quarter inch seam, trim, and you'll trim on the other side, and then you have your beautiful miters. Obviously, you're gonna be doing all of those four corners, and then you're just gonna bind your quilt as normal. So, um, really fun. I love this classic block. Um, it, maybe you enjoy precise piecing. This might be a project you might really enjoy. So grab your kits, very limited in quantity. We'd love to get your feedback. You know, we have a new year here right in front of us, lots of opportunities. If you want to see more of those classic blocks, I'd love to see your comments of which ones you'd like us to do for you. We really appreciate your feedback. We're here for you and I look forward to seeing you soon on another shabby video.